It's all about blending and color mixing today in the studio. So if you're curious about how I blend my acrylic paints and what the most commonly used colors is for me, for my pet portraits, this is for you. If you wanna see more tutorials, subscribe. Hi there, my name is Erica Eriksdotter and I specialize in custom pet portraits that lead the client to a place of healing. If you're looking for more in-depth training, I offer those on my site and you can find the link in the description below. I fell in love with acrylic painting when I started applying the techniques I had used for so many years as a watercolor painter. So my pet portraits are made up of many thin layers. My paint blend is thin and I clean my brush often in water. And I enjoy blending my paints on the palette and then continuing to massage the blend onto the canvas. Now I have 50% humidity in my studio. So my acrylic paint has a slower drying time than for example, somebody who lives in a drier climate. And students in my How to Paint a Dog Portrait online course have shared with me that they use a mister on the back of the canvas or they have a humidifier nearby to keep their acrylic paint from drying too quickly on the canvas to be able to better blending it uh, kind of wet on wet on the canvas. So we're not talking about blending on the palette but when you continue to blend it onto the canvas. So if you live in a drier climate you may want to also look into soft body paint by Liquitex or open acrylic paint by Golden. Before we jump into the palette, if there are other tutorials you'd like to see or if you're having trouble with certain aspects of the acrylic painting process, comment below and I'll see if I can help you. All right, on to the palette, my friend. We're gonna do today's color mixing on an actual stretch canvas. So this is 100% cotton duck and with a medium tooth and texture. The most common colors I use for painting pet portraits are the browner tones. So let's put some of these colors on the palette so you can see them in action. And I love the Liquitex brand, so we're using that for our color mixing today. And I like their performance and particularly they're easy to use. You just open the tubes very easily and this is helpful if you use painting tubes every single day like I do. But there are absolutely other brands on the market as well and I invite you to pick up and play with tubes and find what really you like, you know? You won't know that you like the ease of a screw top or the consistency of a particular brand if you don't playfully paint and practice with them. I hope you find what you enjoy. And if you want to know what materials I love and use, including these colors, I have links to those in the description below. So let's start with raw umber. And then move on to burnt umber. And then we have raw sienna. And lastly, this burnt sienna. You'll notice the immediate difference in these colors just by looking at them on the canvas. You know, they're different brown tones, but the undertone is different as well. So for example, depending on if you're mixing these colors with an unbleached titanium or a titanium white, you'll either draw out the yellowish browns or the reddish browns, or make the hue a bit more grayish in appearance. So let's do that now. We'll plop some titanium white and unbleached titanium. This is heavy body, this is soft body. We'll talk about those in a moment. This is the raw umber. directly onto the canvas. And if you blend it with a little bit of 
titanium white. It will look like that. Some soft body, unbleached titanium, and you automatically see those yellow tones. And with the weight, if you compare them, this is yellow, draws out the yellowish brown. This is, of course, has a little bit more of a uh, grayish tone to it. And that's the true color. Then we have burnt umber. So that's raw umber and this is burnt umber. You see how it's still yellow, but it has a little bit more browner tones in here. Cleaning out my brush. And if we add some titanium white, and unbleached titanium, and it draws out those undertones a little bit more. And then we have raw sienna. Mix it with white. And some unbleached titanium. And lastly, burnt sienna with the earthy, reddish, clayish colors. And what, so what happens if we put some white on here and some unbleached titanium. And it's just, really lovely how how subtle the differences are but if you are painting a specific fur then all of these colors are great hues if we use them for the fur that we want to paint but if we're going for a golden retriever but we end up <laughs> with um with a burnt sienna you know, it's going to be too coppery, too too reddish, too clayish for um, for that. However, mixing them and using them, and depending on how the light source is coming and maybe reflecting on certain things, you'll probably find at least these colors in every fur that I paint. This color, burnt umber, will quickly make the fur too red if it does not have red in it. Right now I'm painting a tabby cat that has distinct areas of yellowish brown and a more muted grayish brown. I'm intentional with my blending for each area. And this is why following a step-by-step -step approach in painting pet portraits is helpful because it's easy to keep track of all the color mixing and where they go because you're gonna focus on one section at a time and one layer at a time. Now, you may have noticed that I have different paint bodies on here on the palette. So the thickness and the consistency of the paint. So let's talk about those next because they are key to blending. And for me, key to the enjoyment of painting. So this raw umber is from a medium body and it's the basics from Liquitex. It's a great starting level for students. And I still have a little bit more left in this tube that I bought a long time ago. So the consistency of a medium one is is the medium. <laughs> is um, while This is a heavy body in raw sienna. And here is the burnt 
Sienna in soft body. And you saw when I poured this out that you can almost, you can use it for dropping. Literally, it will run off if you're, you're, you drop it onto your canvas. And that's part of some people's painting techniques. Soft body will have the flow of a heavy cream, while heavy body feels like butter, much thicker. And heavy body will provide you with more coverage or provide a different style if you blend it with other heavy bodies, for example. So there's no difference in intensity of the color in any of these bodies but heavy body will provide you with more coverage right away and retain brush strokes and hold peaks better while soft body will stay workable for longer you'll see, it will be more translucent um, yeah it's lovely i freely use these bodies together and to their advantage i already mentioned i love painting with thin layers so I often blend um, with a soft body to get a hue or value that I, that I really want. Just stays that creamy, heavy body consistency that is just so delightful to paint with. There's very little resistance here. So even in that first layer of a painting where you have, where you're working with a rough texture, maybe add a little bit more soft body in there to bring up the enjoyment level. And my most used soft body is the unbleached titanium. And when I use a blend that's that creamy, heavy body, you know, I use a lot of the, the softer body to mix up in the ratio of the color blend. When I want more coverage right away, I just include less soft body and more of that heavy body. And it achieves that stronger hue. But I love the medium consistency. Uh, in this basics, there's already a medium consistency. So that is the, the, uh, the texture that I strive for. I also really like when previous layers shine through because I do love painting that thin layers. And I achieve that when using thinner layers and with uh, blending with soft body. To enhance or soften but keep that yellowish brown tones that we so often see in a dog's fur, I use the unbleached titanium to blend with. And it softens, softens these colors, it blends it out a little bit, um, but it keeps that yellowish tones to it. I often grab my heavy body titanium white when I blend with white. So not, I don't usually blend with a soft body white because the hue that I'm after usually typically is from an unbleached titanium and playing with those undertones. But when I paint with white and blend with white, uh, it usually is a heavy body to get a little bit more impact. But then I often use a soft or a soft or medium blend so it doesn't get too thick. When I blend with white, I typically reach for my heavy body, um, titanium white. But then I go for, I blend it with a softer or a medium consistency to get that consistency of that medium uh, or a softer, creamy uh, consistency to be able to work with and to get those textures shine through. It's very rare that I blend with only heavy body paints, like this one. And rarely is it just one true paint colors that I put down on the canvas. I always blend 
at least two of them together, but often it's going to be a few of them for that perfect hue. Another thing I do is always blend as I go. I don't blend the paints together. You know, I don't have a mix like this. And here is the paint. Imagine this to be a lot bigger than this. And then I just dip into this every time I paint. Instead, my palette is full. And each time I blend something new, like this, and then I put my brush to the canvas. And when I need more paint, I go in and I add more. Each brush stroke is always unique. And they may look similar, but it's never exactly the same. I clean my brush a lot. After each blending, after each time on the canvas, I dip my brush in the water and I wipe it off on my towel. So I do this hundreds and hundreds of times during one painting session. I like a clean brush and when I blend I like to have just enough paint on my brush that I need for that, that time that I'm painting. So right now if I'm putting this down I would then go back, clean my brush, Wipe it off. It's damp, but it's clean. And I can do it again. Now, when I'm painting, I don't like too much on the brush. This is way too much for me. Since I paint realistic portraits, every brush stroke is full of intention and detail, so it needs to be consciously applied. If I'm making a blend on the palette and too much of that ends up on my brush, I simply wash it off or I plop it down again, wash it off again, and then pick up what I need from that blend in the amount that feels right and best for me. You know, so much of painting is tapping into our creative energy and to increase those well-being feelings. Things like how the consistency feels on your brush. is important and it, uh, it all adds up. If the blend I'm working with starts drying up, I simply add the tiniest little water, the tiniest dip. And I can kind of reawaken this blend a little bit. Just the tiniest little millimeter of water. Blending it with water will weaken the paint layer on your canvas over time, so please use it sparingly. And this seems to work for me. Just, to, uh, just the tiniest little damp brush or just the tiniest little bit of water, since I don't use any other mediums when I'm blending. Another way I blend is to not blend at all, but to use the damp brush with no paint on it at all and smooth out a blend that I just added onto the canvas. And this is how thin my layers are, typically. To even it out or blend it further.
Of course, there are many layers to painting a pet portrait, and the first layer will always look, well, a little bit strange. But keep at it, keep blending, keep painting, and massaging those hues and values together, and you'll get there one step at a time. All right, my friend. If you like this video, subscribe so you don't miss any of my new tutorials coming your way. And leave me a comment if you're having trouble with blending in acrylic paints, and I'll see how I can help you. Now, check out this video or this video for more. <laughs> Bye!